Hello, and welcome to a series of videos about the Cueza 3D Studio Designer Workflow. My name is Nuno Pinedo, and I'm a designer at KDAB. Earlier this month, the KDAB design team were challenged to do a simple video about the way we work with Cueza and how we use it on a day-to-day -day basis. What you'll see in the following three-part series is the result of some internal discussions among the designers. What could we do that was simple enough for a fast intro to Quiza, designer's workflow, and yet show the ease of use and the potential it offers designers to deal with not so trivial requirements? We ended up opting for what it is a deceptively simple scene but that is not that real to do in the 3D space, especially in low-end art. A very traditional 3D cube over a simple plane, but with great looking metallic reflections and finally a cube reflection on the plane, only using QML 2D tricks and effects and Quiza with its iron tools. So in today's video, we'll be looking at the Blender side of things, creating the scene, the objects, and the materials we need for the QML implementation. In video two, we'll be adding a look at how to import the 3D into QML, testing it, and making it interactable. And finally, in video three, we'll be making some final adjustments to visual components and creating a more believable reflection. So, Without any more delays, let me pass the word to my fellow colleague, Kirsi Sutherland. Hi, I'm Kirsi Sutherland, and today I'll be showing you the Blender side of the work. This is a quick drawing of the plan. We're planning to create a rounded cube that changes color and rotation over time and also has some sliders to allow the user to interact with it. Nuno has also asked that we include a reflection of the cube on the floor. So. Now that we have a plan, let's look at the first part in Blender. This is our scene, a cube on the floor with a plane to give a reflection, using the principled shader. To generate our materials, we need to create the image used as the basis of the material. This is done by placing a sphere in the same place as the object we want to create the material for and rendering the sphere. Once I've placed the sphere, I apply the principled material to it. Here, I've changed to the camera to the one that will be used to render the sphere and ensure that the sphere takes up the entire field of view and then I render the image. We can simulate a reflection by placing a copy of the cube below the ground. The creation of the reflection material is done in the same way, place a sphere and render. Now that I've created the images used for the materials, I can return to the original scene camera and aspect ratio and create the iro materials. I no longer need the spheres, so I'll hide them. I'll show the cube in reflection again, ready to create the materials. I'll begin by removing the original material and replacing it with a new one. I delete the principled shader and replace it with a Quasar node and Iro diffuse material. I link this to the material output and select the first image we created as the reflection map. I then repeat the same process to create the reflection material using the reflection image we had created. As the camera is static, we can improve performance by pre-rendering the floor and using it as a 2D asset. Here we have hidden the foreground elements and use a different skybox to give a more expressive floor. Finally, we hide all the elements except the cube and its reflection and export as a GLTF.
The options I am using here are to separate the GLTF files and images and to ensure that the camera is exported along with the IRO materials. We are now ready to import the GLTF to the code. This will be shown in the second part of the series. Thank you for watching.